Hello, my name is Rose Broderick and I'm the chair of the Mayor's Prayer Breakfast. Uh, this year we're celebrating our 45th anniversary and joining me are several mayors who've participated in our program. I'm going to go around the table now and introduce the mayors present. Mayor Jean Peters, Mayor Dave Wenzel, Mayor John Zagilia, Mayor Al Chellick, and Mayor Richard Bowen. Welcome gentlemen. We thought we'd take advantage of this opportunity to be together to talk about some of the challenges that you as mayors today face in your municipalities and then also Mayor Peters and Mayor Wenzel if you can talk a little bit about the history um, years ago having served as mayor and how you think the office of mayor has changed. So why don't we start with Al, yeah, Mayor well, Kellick. Uh, the uh, experiences that I have had as mayor since I was first elected in 1978 obviously have changed throughout the years. Uh, when, when my community of Mayfield uh, it was part of the coal uh, industry community and uh, we've seen that uh, disappear when I was a young child and of course now we are moving into a different era. Uh, we are starting to see some industries come back to our area that are going to hold our young people here uh, and our area uh, because of the people, the greatest resource of Lackawanna County, uh, we are going to see probably new industries that will keep our young people in our area. And I think that's one of the things that has changed over the past 40 years uh, in our county. And I think uh, the other people can agree with that. Mayor Bowen, what do you think? I think uh, uh, Mayor Chillick is exactly right. Uh, Taylor Borough uh, is experiencing a, a turnaround from the uh, old days of coal, and today is a very happy day for Taylor Borough. We uh, received our grant money from Bammer, and today is the first day of the bid presentation to clean the property at the old tie wall on Church, off Church Street in Taylor, and the removal of the old concrete Moffat breaker as well as the red ash column bank that currently sits off Main Avenue. Uh, those properties, uh, that property is uh, approximately 160 acres that's gonna be turned into a residential area as well as some commercial. And uh, it's gonna uh, have a turning point for Taylor Borough as far as our community is concerned. Uh, the young people, there's gonna be more to do. I, and, and, and certainly a, 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 a proud moment for Taylor Borough today as, as these bids are going to be sent out for, uh, for completion of that project. Well, it, it's, it sounds like what we've heard in the past about the youth of our community being among our greatest exports, you know, leaving the area to find opportunity in other communities, um, is shifting gears now. And we're talking about the youth of our community being wonderful assets for our area. So uh, it sounds like there's great promise for our future uh, economically and otherwise. Uh, mayor Wenzel, can you comment on some of your experiences as a mayor? Uh, how long ago now were you mayor of the city? Oh, that's gracious. I mean, go back uh, 18 years when I left office. I was elected mayor in 1985 and served from 1986 all the way until 1990. Uh, with Mayor Peters, uh, we had a program called Federal Revenue Sharing in which a lot of money was coming through from the federal government. By the time it got to my administration, the government, federal government was actually cutting back and there was actually three million dollars that was taken out of our budget from federal government uh, subsidies from 1986 all the way up until 1989. And uh, that, that left us in a very precarious position really as far as either being able to raise taxes which were already higher than most of the communities around us and therefore you had a lot of people moving out of the city of Scranton in order to get away from the tax base uh, and uh, that was one of our major problems that we had at that time. Hopefully uh, we, uh, with each exceeding um, um, uh, census uh, it looks as if the hemorrhaging as far as people leaving the area has kind of leveled off and maybe it's going to be time for us to turn around. And one of the things, which one of the positive things about our area, is the, um, uh, our education industry that we have here in Scranton. Between the University of Scranton and Marywood and Lackawanna College and Keystone College, we have got 
a, uh, a base here in which a, it's a non-polluting base too, I might add, of actually being able to um, uh, provide jobs for people because all of these institutions, they add millions and millions of dollars to our economy. And hopefully this just might be the, uh, the future of our city, which would be a college town, which would be terrific. Mm -hmm. Mayor Peters, would you like to comment? Well, I think that uh, some of the people that have come from this community have brought fame to this community. People like uh, Governor Scranton, former Governor Scranton, Governor Casey. Uh, but certainly we have become the uh, star of the nation uh, more recently in this presidential campaign. We have seen some of our brothers and sisters, as you might say, who have come from this area and who are bringing fame back to this area, so much so that uh, Scranton has become probably the focal point in the campaign as Pennsylvania is, but certainly the city of Scranton. And I'm very proud to have been a mayor of this city for eight years. I decided not to run for a third term because I believe in the two-term form of government. And, uh, but I do wish to acknowledge the people that are bringing our city uh, back to the forefront. Uh, I believe in this city. I was born and raised here. I'm very proud of it. And uh, Scranton was a proud city when I was mayor, uh, and it's certainly a proud city now. And uh, I served under the man who brought me into politics. I always like to recognize him, Bill Schmidt. And Bill Schmidt began the uh, this whole mayor's prayer breakfast, and uh, I want to acknowledge that fact and bring Bill's memory back into it, and, and also my appreciation for him bringing me into my into government as his director of public works. Uh, so with that, I'd like to turn this back over to Rose, who's done a great job, and always has done it, and has proved today in the the breakfast that we had. So, Rose, I acknowledge you and thank, thank you, you for what you do and have done and will do. Thank you very much. Well, gentlemen, uh, Mayor Zagalia, we haven't heard from you yet. Would you like to comment? Yes, I would. <clears throat> I've been mayor for 30 years, and I want to also thank uh, Mayor Peters and Deputy Mayor uh, Connors for helping us uh, fight the prison in Mosey. Right now, sitting on the mountain up there, we have a little over 5,000 jobs, and they're all up jobs too that is there. We also have that new mall that's put up there, but uh, the jobs that come in f to the borough, Mosey, uh, like I say, 20 years ago or whatever, when Deputy Mayor C Connors went to Harrisburg and we beat the prison. And uh, right now, Mosey is prospering real well. Uh, we have a garbage fee of $50 and we got the, the taxes are one of the lowest in the county. You know, there, there is another uh, advantage that we have in Pennsylvania and uh, I know a lot of times you hear it especially in the Scranton Times that they want to consolidate and take away like all the communities but you know in the view of all of us that serve in the outlying communities that is a plus for our entire area because you have so many different people involved in democratically elected boards and agencies uh, and if you look at all the volunteer fire companies and all the myriad police forces that we have that offer uh, first responders that are trained in the event of uh, catastrophes, I think you see uh, this volunteerism on a, a grand scale and, and they provide the impetus for people to get involved in other endeavors. So there's another advantage that we could be proud of in, in Pennsylvania is all of the different school districts and all of the different uh, communities that we have that are really the backbone of democracy. You know, I have a question uh, for you. I mean, there are several municipalities in Lackawanna County alone. How do the mayors of all the municipalities within the county collaborate? Is there, is there a, a significant amount of collaboration? <clears throat> we do have an organization right now that I believe there's 16 that's involved in it, but I think there's 18 mayors. Uh, but there's townships, but this is the, just the mayor. Right. Uh, we, ha we do meet every three months. Uh, and they're all the way from Mayfield to, to Music to Taylor. So you share ideas? You, yes, you we do. We share ideas. We share like what, what's happening, uh, mm -hmm. trying to resolve different problems within mm -hmm. the police department or uh, garbage pickups or whatever. Mm -hmm. We could mm -hmm. share it together and using the Burroughs Association, 
which I'm on the board of directors with the Burroughs Association. Well, Mayor, you noted that you've been the mayor for three decades. Yep. Three decades. For six years. <laughs> you are truly a and public I'm still servant. A carpet <laughs> I'm really let, let me ask you another question, <laughs> gentlemen. Uh, how and what would you do to challenge the youth of our community to give serious consideration to uh, pursuing a life as a public servant in politics, public office, whatever? I would like to start, if I, if I may. Sure. Uh, I, I think that the youth of tomorrow certainly has great opportunity to pursue, uh, whether it be political background or, or political endeavors. But I think in this area, and this breakfast epitomizes the, the whole gathering of, of every religion here this morning at the breakfast. And I think the young people that are involved from each school district that attend this breakfast have to see the camaraderie amongst the, the, the political beings, the political mayors, the, 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 the commissioners, the, 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 the congressmen that, are, that have attended here. But I, I think the children of today are becoming, the young are becoming more active with political, especially as, as Mayor Peters alluded to, this election. I think more young folks have registered to vote for this election than ever before. And I think that's, that's, that's kind of a showing what the young people are thinking about. They're thinking about their future. And I, I think it, they feel as though that if they register to vote, they're having a say, they're becoming involved. And I, I think many years ago, some of the younger people had missed that. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll allude to my mentor in the political arena was, and, and God rest his soul, Chester Nurch nurtured me along the way in my political background and I was a, I happened to be a school director in in 1981 I was 31 years old at the Riverside School District so I had a very young beginning as far as political future and endeavors and I think if if the younger generation today can can kind of hook up with maybe a mentor of their own this would certainly nurtured them along the way in their, in their future. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because years ago, uh, I participated in the very first Leadership Lackawanna program that was sponsored by the Chamber. And one of our guest speakers at graduation was former governor, now deceased, uh, Bob Casey. And um, also Monsignor McGowan, who has now passed. And both gentlemen strongly encouraged the graduates of the class to become engaged in community work, whether on the political level or uh, serving on the boards of nonprofit organizations. And as a result of that program, I happened to be at a township meeting out in Ransom, and someone said, we have an opening for a school board seat. Anyone in the room here interested in running for public office? And I thought about it for about two minutes and said, I'll do it. And my husband said, what are you, crazy? You know, do you have any idea the time this will consume? But I had the time. And I thought, well, if there's a need, I'm going to step up to the plate just as um, Governor Casey and Monsignor McGowan suggested. And I served on the Abbey Tonight School Board for four years. And then thought later on about running for other offices, including county commissioner, and later decided that wasn't the right thing for me. The timing was not right. So um, any other words of wisdom, Rolls. advice? I think yes. I in fact, uh, you were on the uh, school board in Abington when we were, our firm was appointed, Peter Design Group, to design the, uh, redesign most of your schools. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, it was refreshing to see not just men on school boards, that women have come on school boards. And women, when I became mayor, there were very few women in city government, and I appointed the first uh, female as the police officer and the first uh, solicitor, Sandy Cernak, Rose uh, Kaufman is the first, and then Sandy Cernak in the solicitor's office. And it became an evolution of women coming into government. And look what we have today. A woman has uh, one, had millions of votes in the primary, the Democratic primary. Mm -hmm. A woman is on the, uh, the Republican uh, candidacy for president, but I think that's very important, but what is important is the evolution of, of elections and of people, young people becoming involved in government. I remember when I was a boy, most people were Republican or Democrat because the families were Republican or Democrat. Uh, today that has changed. The, uh, with the continuity of education and the improvement of education, 
and students are becoming educated, they are choosing which party they want to belong to, which party they want to vote, to, vote for. And we see that in Scranton because we see so much of it, especially in Scranton, because of some of our Scrantonians going into the presidential race. And I, I think that's all part of that ev evolution, Rose, of you becoming a school director and then uh, Ms. Kalpin becoming a, a school officer and Sandra Cernick becoming a city solicitor and then now with women on the presidential ticket. That hasn't happened before. Uh, one of my daughters is a uh, senior vice president of Penn Security Bank. Uh, she's the only woman up on that floor, per se. And, uh, but she has brought that change, like you have on the school board, like so many women have done and are going forward. That's very important. My son has been involved politically in the state campaign. And uh, uh, that's men and that's women, but they're picking their own party, their own uh, way of going in government. And I think, uh, Rose, you have done a great job today as chair of this event. And uh, it was to be just men. Dave Tresher has done a great job, but you followed with Dave. So what I'm, what I'm saying, in effect, is that what Rose has done, and women are coming into government, women are coming into their own, and I think the whole political system is having an evolution of, of young people coming forward, and that's what we're saying today. And I believe there, there is a female mayor in um, Lackawanna County. Uh, oh, there's, the there's several. Uh, several. several. Oh, <coughs> Just so we have one from Blakely. Old Ford. Old Ford. Old Ford. Old Ford. Right. Yeah. right, right. So, with regard to mentors, mentees, are, are you gentlemen currently serving as mentors to young citizens who, younger citizens who may be interested in becoming mayor someday in your municipality or city? I have a son that's on council in Music. <laughs> He just got elected two years ago. Following in his dad's footsteps. I don't know where he's following. <laughs> <laughs> I now I know you have a daughter. Uh, I have a daughter, yes. I have t uh, actually three children. Uh, but right now, um, a lot of my mentoring is with my six-year-old grandson. Since I'm retired, I get a chance to babysit a lot. But I think, and, and, and the best way to get young people involved is naturally to set examples. Uh, we have uh, experienced the last uh, two decades, especially on the national level, a divisiveness that turns a lot of people off to politics. And politics is really what gears everybody into action. Uh, I, I'm hoping that once this election is over that we, we can take on the energy that has been generated by the campaign of both the Republicans and Democrats uh, and getting so many young people registered and involved in this campaign that now we will have a leader that's going to bring everybody together. And when you create positive role models, I think that just trickles down into uh, our youth and you'll see more of them getting involved because nobody likes negativity. And the youth always like to get involved in positive things. And I think that's one of the things that we could all uh, look forward to. Well, how do you keep it going in the face of controversy and negativism? I mean, you can't obviously please all of your constituents all the time. So what are, what are some of the things that, that you did, Dave, to kind of keep it going? Well, I wanted to just uh, mention about the getting in, the young people involved in politics. And there's no such thing as just waiting until you're 18 years of age to vote, either. I was 14 years old when uh, my mother, my, my uh, grandmother was the committee woman for the 20th Ward 1st District and my father was the committee man. And my job on election day was to go down to the polls at like around 4 o'clock in the afternoon and find out how many Republicans hadn't shown up, have all their names, and then go back home and to call them up and to get, encourage them to get to the polls. And at a young age of 14 years of age, I felt like I was part of the system like I was part of uh, the, the whole process and everything. And so then I, I tended to watch the returns coming through at night. And with that, you, you, get, the, you get the bug, <laughs> as they say. But uh, your other question was about uh, the negativism. Well, negativism, yes. you know, you had, you had to get up each day and, and yeah. assume your responsibilities when you know that you cannot and will not satisfy all, satisfy all of your constituents all the time. Well, I think everyone... I thought David was going to tell us he voted when he was 14. <laughs> <laughs> some voting irregularities in this city and county, you know. I saw years. some voting irregularities. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, the negativism, uh, you know, they finally found out that negativism sells and it really makes them have
headway. And I think that's one of the reasons that's cut down a number of people who actually go out and vote. They say, why should I vote for either one of these guys? They're throwing mud at one another, and so they stay home. They haven't got a real choice. Uh, the way, uh, when I was in office, I found out that a lot of the negativism didn't get, reach me, but it did reach my wife at home, who was home all the time while I'm going out. She's the one that gets the telephone calls, or the people in the office who get the telephone calls. And there was a little barrier set up in there, and even though I wanted to know what was going on, sometimes they did protect me, which is sometimes you don't want to have done. But uh, the, uh, and most of the time it was a very positive. When you're in the office, about 90% of everything that happens to you during the daytime is very positive. You meet people who are the best people in your community because they want to do something for you. And unfortunately, it's sometimes the people who are the negative ones who get into the newspapers, and that's what people remember, and that's what they want to talk about. Controversy sells, as they say, you know? Mm -hmm. But I always found the, being mayor of the city was always a very positive um, uh, uh, way of uh, handling my life during that period of time. I think the word, the word politics to a lot of people when they hear it is someone irresponsible, illegal, uh, taking money that doesn't belong to them, uh, and all of this. Politics has a dirty, dirty word to many people. And I've heard so many people say, I'm not voting because they're all crooks. Whoever gets elected is a crook. There are a lot of illegal people in politics. There are a lot of illegal, uh, legal people in politics. Uh, not voting doesn't help that system at all. It does have, allow corruption. You should vote. Every young woman, every young man, whatever your age, how young you may be up to 90 or 100 years old, or the first time you're voting. Your vote means that many of those corrupt politicians are not going to be there any longer. They'll know they can't be voted in if you help to get them out. So politics is a clean word. My son was a candidate for state office, my son Joe, a few years ago. He came very close as an unknown becoming uh, a state figure, but he was served under President Clinton as the deputy drug czar. General McCaffrey was the czar. Uh, Joe was one of the four prosecutors that uh, served and brought, in the federal government, brought the Nicodemus Scarfo and the entire fifth Philadelphia mob, put them in jail, out of business. Uh, Joe was one of the, the, uh, the chief deputy attorney general in Pennsylvania for many years under the four attorney generals. So uh, he certainly is a, an honest, forthright uh, citizen, he was a politician, and he, he ran in politics. So uh, what I'm saying in effect is young people should look forward to become involved in politics so that we can take the corrupt politicians out. They don't belong there. And only you can help by voting. Voting politics is not a dirty word, it's a good word. Dave Wenzel, hero, war hero. Three limbs of David were destroyed in a man, mine. And when David's father asked me one day, can you help my son? I said, have him come to my office, as Dave remembers. And I came and I met this bright, sharp looking young man who could bring some more good back into the government. Did it already in the military. Can he do anything in the civil? I felt he could. I said, Dave, that's your desk right there next to mine in the mayor's office. You work with Dolores D'Amico, God rest her soul, a great woman in politics. And David, the first thing I did was appoint him to the United Nations Committee, and then the mayor's prayer breakfast, and then Dave went on on his own, became tax collector, and then mayor. So, you know, there are good people in politics, but only you can help by voting for a person you feel will be good in, in the government. You know, I, I have to comment on the prayer breakfast itself because year after year after year, uh, several mayors from the outlying communities as well as the mayors that have served the city of Scranton participate in the prayer breakfast. And with 600 people attending, uh, at least one third of the attendance is made up of youth of our community. So they have a wonderful opportunity to see role models 
each and every year, folks who are really committed to making a difference in their community. And I thank you, gentlemen, for being with us this morning, and I thank you for your comments, and I'm hoping that uh, folks in the community who are interested in serving as public servants will step up to the plate, uh, reach out to any one of these mayors to uh, pick their brains, seek guidance and, and direction, and uh, join them in their efforts. Thank you very much.